Hey, hello everybody. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to set up wall and floor pieces for use in the maze generator, as well as setting up different details that can be scattered throughout the maze. So the first thing that you have to know is that all of these, these wall pieces have their pivot point dead center. So dead center on all axes. In most modeling software, you have a you know a snap to center for the pivot point, and that's exactly what you want to do with these. And it's just the way I've written the algorithm. It could have been written with the pivot point in the bottom left or in the bottom center of these wall pieces, but it just seemed like the easiest, most consistent way was to put it dead center. And that goes for the floor pieces as well. If we go to a floor piece on the edge. You'll notice that it's it's dead center as well and if you have your pivot point centered and you know your exact dimensions as we mentioned in the previous video then you can just enter all that here in the generator and you'll get this a nice seamless maze generation without any gaps or cracks or things like that to worry about details are very similar if you look here i have something i've called a floating cube that's being scattered throughout the maze. So if you look at in the generator, we have wall details and other details. The floating cube is in other details. Other details are spread throughout the maze and kind of locked into a small tile area. And you'll notice here that I've set the thickness. So these are two by two by two, so thickness with height and width and you can adjust these you know for uh, for like an NPC you can put NPCs and scatter them throughout the maze so you'll set your height you know roughly two meters or whatever your model is and the rough thickness and width and this isn't as important to get right as the wall and floor pieces it can be more uh, I guess guesstimated although again you should make sure that your pivot point is centered to everything and really centered width uh, and height and length not necessarily the volume center which is one place you can put the pivot point but if you put a cube or a, like a rectangle a rectangular prism around that model where would be the center of that rectangle that's generally the best way to figure out um, where to put the pivot point and then what values uh, to use here so when we set the thickness, height, and width, all this is going to do is prevent us from having things that clip through the floor or that clip into walls or end up leaving their, the individual tile they were um, slotted to spawn on. So if you notice here, we have a frequency. So basically this frequency means 20% of the time this particular object will spawn on a cube or on a on a tile and you can have multiple things spawn you can have more than just one floating cube you can add multiple things you want scattered throughout the maze and these min and max height values so min height I can't decrease it below uh, one right now if I go negative 20 I can't put it below one because at one it'll be right on the ground and that has to do with these dimensions I've set up here and the max height is just obviously how far off the off the ground we allow it to be spawned. And then these offsets are x and then z based on these world uh, world vectors here, and that'll just set an offset around the t the floor piece. So you could leave them all at zero and every single one would spawn dead center. But when you add an offset, they can spawn kind of all over the place. And those settings are the same for every element we want to add to this array. So we can have floating cubes and floating coins and uh, floating balloons if we want to. The wall details are fairly similar. Again, you're going to have the pivot point dead center. Let's find one of these here. You're going to have the pivot point dead center. One thing that's different about wall details is that you're going to want to have the Z axis pointed away from the wall. So if this was a torch, you would want the, 
the base of the sconce over here and then the torch coming out over here and your z-axis would line up with that because when it gets stuck on a wall it's going to be oriented the same way every time it won't be upside down it won't randomly rotate nothing like that unless you want to modify the generator to do that for you and by all means go ahead hopefully there's enough comments in there to help walk you through it and the same settings are here uh, the difference being that you cannot put wall details above the maximum height of the wall I set this to 100 that number is going to get clamped so that it doesn't jut up above the wall here and that's obviously because anything that's stuck to the wall we don't want floating off in space <clears throat> So pretty straightforward, just make sure your pivot points are centered across all these things, make sure you know their dimensions and then you can enter them here, and then set your random variance you want as well as your frequency of spawns. And you can add as many details to the walls or floors as you want, you're not limited to just torches or just floating cubes. Again you can add you know, torches and vines and uh, different, like you could add projectors that are projecting cracks in the walls, anything like that. In the next video, I'm going to go into depth about plazas, which are a little bit different. I wish I could have made them the same thing. Oh yeah, just slap the pivot point in the center and set up your prefab and away you go. But just due to generation limitations and how I, uh, I had to end up generating these open spaces, uh, they are a little bit different. They're actually more similar to how the maze itself is handled. But we'll get into that in the next video.